you know, in communication, then we constantly have uh, times where we're miscommunicating or just not on the same page as someone else. But and my friends know that one of the quickest ways to get under my skin and really irritate me is to say, oh, well, we must have had a communication breakdown there. Uh, and they do it all the time because they know it drives me insane because there is no such thing as a communication breakdown. It's not something that happens. Now, uh, admittedly, communication breakdown is one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs of all time. But setting that aside, communication is not an engine. It's not a, it's not something that breaks down like a mechanical uh, engine or something like that. It, it just isn't. Communication does not break down. So we have lots of ways to miscommunicate. And, uh, but there's a communication process at work. And when something goes wrong, it's not a breakdown in that process. It's simply a miscommunication. And, uh, and to better understand that and to, to avoid this idea of a communication breakdown, uh, let's talk a little bit about the process of communication, uh, what that is, what the elements are and how we can go about managing communication more effectively if, by understanding those elements. Specifically today, we're going to look at what's called the transactional model of communication. And, uh, and very simply, the transactional model starts with uh, a person. And, uh, and so you have at least one person. And then uh, on the other end, we're just going to say on the other end, there's, there's another person. Now, this could be you could have more than one person that's on the other side of this. You could have that only that one person and communicating with themselves or whatever. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to, we're going to call this a, um, an interpersonal communication and say that, um, there's one other person. So it's, you got one person kind of walking down the street doing their thing and they run across this other person and, and they just kind of think to themselves what that person doing. They see that person doing something. They say that that's so cool. I should tell them that person is doing something cool. I should tell them that what they're doing is cool. And so they do, they say, cool beans, dude. That's really cool what you're doing there. I really like what's happened, what, what you're doing. And, uh, and so uh, then what we have establishing now is the first two elements of the communication process. First of all, we have communicator A, right, who's that first person, uh, and communicator B, and we don't call them the sender or receiver anymore because both people, as we're going to find out, are senders and receivers. So we just call them communicator A and communicator B. There's one person on one side and one person on the other. And what we also had there is the third element when that person, communicator A, spoke to the other one and, uh, and uh, you know, outwardly shared something with them, that became what we call the message. And the message is just what that person wanted to communicate to the other. It's the what of the communication. It's what they were trying to communicate. Hey, you're doing something cool. I really like it. All right, cool beans, man. And so that was the message that you're doing something really cool. Now, that Communicator A also communicated that somehow, and that how is what we call the channel of communication. A channel is just how that message is being communicated. In this instance, presumably it's just that person using their voice. As far as we know, they didn't use a, a bullhorn or a phone or a billboard or anything else to communicate. They just communicated using their voice, but we can communicate in a variety of ways. Again, using our voice, using some form of technology like a phone, either to talk through or to text. Um, we can use nonverbal communication. We can communicate in all different kinds of ways, right? And whatever way we are communicating or ways, which is why you have potentially channels. It's not just one channel all the time, but uh, whatever ways we are communicating, we call that the channel. That's how that message is being communicated. Okay. okay. Moving on. So we got the first four out of the seven out of the way already. So we got communicator A, communicator B. Communicator A has a message that they're sending through a channel to communicator B. Uh, but that's not the end of it, right? On the other side, we have communicator B. And communicator B hears that message. Here's that person say, cool beans, dude. And they think, oh, I ought to respond. That's the polite thing to do, right? So they say, thanks, dude. And maybe give them a little dab or something. So you got not only the, the words that they're using, but also the dab, the nonverbal thing. So they're, they're communicating verbally and nonverbally there. And so we have not only the message that's being communicated from communicator A, but we also have communicator B sending at the same time notice. That's why we have the arrows going both directions. Now this communication is happening in both directions simultaneously. And we have the feedback communicator B is responding to what we call feedback. And again, feedback could be verbal. It could be nonverbal and it could take a variety of different forms and be through a variety of different channels as well. Um, so, but we have the message and we have a feedback and that creates this simultaneous, 
um, uh, communication experience that's happening instantaneously, oftentimes instantaneously, depending on the, the type of communication, but it's simultaneously happening, the message and the feedback, right? And, uh, and so, um, so there we go. Now we have our fifth um, of the seven elements. Okay. Uh, but while all of this is going on, it is possible that there could be some other things happening, right? Depending on where they're at and what's going on, um, there could be some construction going on. Right. There could be some people working in the background. There could be um, some people um, driving by in their cars and honking or just the sound of the cars making noise. There could be somebody in the room with one of them or both of them watching TV. And so there's noise coming across through the television. Right. And all of these things or, or any a number of other things could potentially be, uh, you know, getting in the way. Of the, of the sending and receiving of that message and or feedback, right? It's getting in the way. It's, it's interfering with that, right? And that is what we call noise, right? And that's the sixth element here, noise. And noise is anything that interferes with the sending and receiving of that message, whether it's auditory or, and audible, or whether it's just that they're speaking different languages, or maybe one of them is, is too hot or too cold. And depending on what communicator B was doing, if they're, they were doing something really cool and they're, they're just worn out and not listening very well, that could be noise as well. They could have some internal noise, like a headache or be hungry or things like that. So noise can come in a variety of different forms as well. And that could be um, internal or external. It could be from the environment around you. Um, so all kinds of things that happen with noise, but noise is anything at all that interferes in any way with the sending or receiving of that message or feedback for one or both of the communicators, one or both of the parties. There, okay. Uh, so we have noise that interferes and that happens quite frequently in communication. We have noise. Um, then we also have to think about in what circumstances is this communication happening? Right? I haven't laid much groundwork for that, but there is a specific uh, circumstance and we call that the context. Sometimes we call that the environment um, um, the, the, in which this is taking place. Are we out on the street? Are we in the produce section of a grocery store? Are we having a candlelight dinner? Are we at a loud concert? Are we, we're, you know, all of those things impact um, the context because communication does not happen in a vacuum, right? Uh, certainly not literally and, and not even figuratively. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens somewhere, sometime, at some place, right? And all kinds of things will affect the context as well and help create that context. So things like the environment. And so where is this, as I said, where is this taking place? Are we out on the street? Are we in a home? Are we having a nice quiet dinner? Are we in the, you know, at a loud concert or bar or whatever? What's the environment? What's my relationship with the other person? Or what's, what's communicator A's relationship with communicator B? Are they strangers? Are they best friends? Are they, you know, you swap out your best friend for a total stranger in that scenario. And that's a different conversation, right? So what's the relationship there? Well, what's the situation? What's happening in that time? If communicator B is doing something cool, then it wouldn't be out of place for the other person to say, that was really cool. Um, but if they're just kind of standing around and somebody came up to you and said, oh, yeah, that was really cool. And that might be confusing. So what's the situation? Uh, and, and are you at work? Are you on the street? Are you, you know, again, what, what are the, the variables in that regard? And then what's the culture? In what culture is this taking place? Culture is a huge influence on all types of communication and in all of these elements. So what is the culture? Is the culture one that rewards somebody doing something cool uh, out on their own? Or is it some, uh, the culture that says, no, that's not appropriate here or whatever. So uh, the culture will impact how we view these things and how we approach these things. So uh, that, that factors into context as well. Okay. So Again, we have these seven and it's just seven things that happen in communication, right? Just seven elements. How hard can that be to manage? Right. Uh, but as we can, we can all uh, attest to, I'm sure uh, these seven elements are not easy to manage all the time. Okay. It's hard. It's like juggling, you know, seven different chainsaws at the same time. It's not easy to do, you know, and sometimes we do it better than other times, but these are the things we need to think about and work on kind of mastering and controlling. And the better we can control these things and better we can manage these things, um, then the, uh, the more effective we will be as communicators. Then. Okay. So if you have questions about the uh, communication process or, or specifically the transactional model of communication, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. Um, but in the meantime, I hope this helps you understand that 
not only is communication a process that cannot technically break down, it's not an engine, it's, it's, an, it's, you know, it's just a, a kind of a living process thing, but, um, but not only that, but there are ways that we can manage these things and understand these different variables so that we can be more effective communicators by understanding the process of communication.